NASA just captured the very first existence of dark matter. For what reason do astronomers believe in dark matter? Because nobody has ever claimed to have seen it personally or even to have managed to take a picture of it before this one. The photograph is significant. Dark matter, however, has a revered place in astronomical theory. It is a crucial component of the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, also known as the Standard Model of Big Bang Cosmology, which is a widely accepted theory of how the universe functions and one that is in good agreement with what astronomers believe they see when they peer out into deep space. Some astronomers, however, believe that dark matter is either non-existent or that we just do not understand it. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we will be taking a look at the very first evidence of dark matter. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. The necessity for the theory that gave rise to the idea of dark matter. Based solely on what we can see, our universe shouldn't be able to exist or function as it does since no amount of visible matter could ever be able to produce the gravitational force needed to hold our galaxy clusters together. To explain this discrepancy, physicists have hypothesized the existence of dark matter. They contend that our universe must contain a component that we cannot see, a substance that does not absorb, reflect, or emit light, and that is dark matter. The earliest discovery of the mysterious substance that makes up the majority of the universe has been made by scientists in the region of galaxies that were created roughly 12 billion years ago. The results, which were attained through a collaboration led by scientists from Nagoya University in Japan, imply that dark matter in the early cosmos is less clumpy than many current cosmological models anticipate. If future research supports this hypothesis, it may alter our understanding of how galaxies develop and suggest that the fundamental laws regulating the universe may have been different when it was only 1.7 billion years old 13.7 billion years ago. The Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, a type of fossil radiation left over from the Big Bang that is dispersed throughout the whole cosmos, is the key to mapping dark matter in the very early universe. Masami Ouchi, a professor at the University of Tokyo, said in a statement that the idea to look at dark matter around distant galaxies was crazy. No one realized we could do this. But Hiro now told me that it may be possible to use the CMB to look at the dark matter surrounding these galaxies after I gave a talk about a sizable sample of far-off galaxies. Astronomers perceive other galaxies as they were when the observed light left them because light takes a finite amount of time to travel from faraway objects to Earth. The further away a galaxy is from us, the longer it has taken for its light to reach us and, as a result, the further back in time we view it. As a result, the farthest galaxies are visible to us as they were billions of years ago in the early universe. It is even harder to observe dark matter. Around 85% of the universe's entire mass is made up of the enigmatic element known as dark matter. It doesn't interact with matter and light in the same way as regular matter, which is composed of protons and neutrons and makes up stars, planets, and ourselves. Astronomers must rely on the interaction of dark matter with gravity in order to see it at all. The curvature of space-time is brought about by massive objects in accordance with Einstein's theory of relativity. A common illustration is a flexible rubber sheet holding balls of increasing mass. The size of the dent the mass makes in the sheet increases with mass. The extremeness of the space-time distortion is also proportional to the size of the cosmic object. Space-time is significantly bent by massive objects like galaxies, to the point where light from sources behind a galaxy is bent, mimicking the deviation of a pebble rolling across a stretched rubber sheet. The gravitational lensing effect moves the location of the light source in the sky. Astronomers can analyze how light from a source behind a galaxy is altered as it goes through a lens galaxy to study the distribution of dark matter in that galaxy. The more dark matter a lens galaxy has, the greater the distortion of the light traveling through it. But there are drawbacks to the method. As astronomers gaze deeper into the cosmos and farther back in time, the lensing effect becomes more subtle and challenging to see, and scientists need both a lot of background sources and a lot of early galaxies to spot lensing by dark matter. This is because the earliest and most distant galaxies are very faint. 
Due to this issue, the mapping of the distribution of dark matter has been restricted to galaxies that are 8 to 10 billion years old. However, the CMB offers a source of light that is older than any galaxy. When the universe cooled down enough for atoms to form, there were fewer free electrons to scatter light at a time cosmologists refer to as the last scattering, which caused the universe to cease being opaque to light and turn transparent. This transformation resulted in the creation of the CMB, a form of ubiquitous radiation. Additionally, due to gravitational lensing, galaxies with dark matter can distort the CMB, just like they can with light from other far-off sources. Yuichi Harakami, an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo, stated in a statement that the majority of researchers employ source galaxies to measure the dispersion of dark matter from the present to 8 billion years ago. But since we use the more distant CMB to measure dark matter, we could go back deeper in time. To find dark matter from when the universe was only 1.7 billion years old, the researchers coupled lensing distortions of a large sample of ancient galaxies with those of the CMB. And the picture of the cosmos painted by this ancient dark matter is substantially different. Harakane stated, We were measuring dark matter for the first time from practically the earliest stages of the cosmos. Things were drastically different 12 billion years ago, and now there are more galaxies in the process of formation than ever before, along with the first galaxy clusters that are beginning to form. The number of galaxies in these clusters can range from 100 to 1,000, and they are gravitationally coupled to substantial volumes of dark matter. The idea that dark matter is less clumpy than many current models imply it should be in the early cosmos is one of the most important parts of the team's discoveries. For instance, the generally accepted Lambda CDM model proposes that the minute variations in the CMB should have caused gravity to produce densely packed pockets of matter. It should also result in dense pockets of dark matter as a result of these fluctuations, which eventually cause matter to collapse to create galaxies, stars, and planets. To determine if the Lambda CDM model agrees with observations of dark matter in the early universe or whether the model's underlying presumptions need to be amended, the team will continue to gather evidence. The Subaru Hyper Subprime Cam Survey, which examines data from a telescope in Hawaii, is where the team got the data they utilized to come to their conclusions. A better map of the distribution of dark matter may be accessible if the remaining observations are included, as the researchers have only used about a third of this data so far. The team is also anticipating data from the Legacy Survey of Space and Time, which will enable them to examine dark matter much further in the past. And that ends today's episode. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts, and please don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.